the property market is transitioning from a seller's market to a buyer's market. That's going to have massive implications for all of you guys and it's going to present massive opportunities to people investing in property. In this video, we're going to prove to you what is actually happening and that transitioning is taking place and give you some ideas of what to look for in your local area and some of the opportunities that are going to come out in the other end. As usual, I'm joined by Andrew Roberts. How are you doing, Andrew? Hi, you doing, Jeff? I'm fabulous and I love it. This is a time for us to go and play. This is a real time. And you know what? A lot of the viewers out there, particularly those who've started investing in the last 10 years, they don't know what this is like investing in a seller's market. We have, of course, been around the block a little bit, seen a few cycles, and the a seller's market is the time when we can play oh, uh, because vendors are all open to anything creative that we have to say in terms of deal structures and the like. Um, and um, basically, the investors that are out there aren't so hyped up. The froth is taken out of the market as well. Well, I think a lot of investors fall by the wayside because they've never operated in a market like this and what you tend to see is a few investors getting caught as the tide goes out without their shorts on but what we're actually looking at here is a, a real different market with different dynamics there's been a lot of change going on we've seen interest rate rises just tell them what a buyer's market and seller's market are okay to... well a, a, very simply a seller's market is where a seller can dictate the price and the terms of the transaction. And that is what we've basically been uh, in for probably around eight years or so, possibly up to 10. Now that is where we've had really, really cheap debt. It's mm. been debt at a 300 year low. And I think, one, I mean, how many times do you see property ads that say offers um, Above, above this yeah. price and how many times do you see um, a, a bidding processes set up saying best bids by Friday 12 noon yeah. and there are 30 people going for it those days are over those days have well and truly gone and it's even being accepted by agents that have gone now a buyer's market is where a buyer can decide on the price that they want to pay and pretty much there's few buyers in the market one of the statistics out there at the moment is there are 20% fewer buyers, but there's still the same amount of inventory for sale. Now, so far, we've just been waffling on, Andrew and I, but we're going to give you uh, unequivocal proof that these, this transition has already taken place. We're going to show you an amazing graphic in a moment. But if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon. We put out new videos each and every week, all dedicated to keeping you up to speed on your property investing game. Smash that like button, tell us whether you agree, disagree, but let's get on with it. Let's see the unequivocal proof of this change. What's happening here, Andrew? Well, what I've got here on screen is a heat map. Now, this isn't a party political broadcast by any stretch of the imagination. It's not a forecast of next year's general election. This is a map produced by the estate agents. It's published in the advisory, the estate agent trade press. Now the red... Estate agents normally talk the market up at any time, but the trade press has absolutely. produced this data. Go on, talk us through what it's the, actually saying. This is actually June 2022 on the side of the screen nearest Ranjan. Now the darker the red, the hotter the market is. So it's postcoded here so you can see which areas are really, really hot buyers, sorry, sellers areas. So really, really hot sellers areas. Now, as we transition, what we've seen over the year is that June 2023, one year on, snapshot, estate agents are actually reporting areas have gone white, which means it's a neutral market, Buyers and sellers are in equal parity, negotiating. There's areas that are becoming light blue and some going really dark blue. I mean, for investors up north, North Wales, pretty much most of Wales actually, it is a buyer's market. Now what that means is these buyers are not only dictating the price, but often the terms that they're exactly. doing the purchase on. 
And let's have a look at why this is the case, because you know, of course we know that in the last year, interest rates have gone up dramatically. Um, over 1.4 million mortgages are coming to the end of a fixed rate uh, over the next year. That's massive. And of course, what that means is that uh, existing owner occupiers have a massive increase in their mortgage bill. But the other side of it, this is buyers. If you are looking to if you are looking to buy a property for three hundred thousand pounds with a three hundred thousand pound mortgage, say one and a half years ago, you would need a certain amount of income for affordability when interest rates were half what they are now. Now, because interest rates have more than doubled, uh, you won't be able to raise a three hundred k mortgage on the same salary that you could have done. Um, a year and a half ago. Absolutely. So that means that the pool of available buyers for different for each property type is suddenly down based on mortgage affordability and that's what we're seeing the evidence of. Well we certainly are. I mean with if I refer firstly to some detailed data and on screen I've got a graph here produced by the Bank of England no less and it goes back to the year 1700 on this side well, we can you were see. just in uh, short trousers then, were you? I was. I, I was actually just getting off uh, a clipper ship, <laughs> and I, I've been out <laughs> wrecking uh, far afield. <laughs> but no, what we can actually see is a trend line here, where pretty much five percent is this line here, and interest rates have sort of bibbled and bobbled, just around the five percent mark for nearly two hundred years. It then dropped to a historical low, and what? Oh, this was the World War I and World War II era here, where interest rates dropped low. Post that, interest rates rose to when we were in our short trousers, up to 15.9%, I remember those days. And then it fell at the 2008 crash to an all-time low, bibbling and bobbling between a quarter percent and 0.1% base rate. And it's now spiked up. Now, I hear at the Baker Street property meet, a lot of investors come up to me going, oh, deals don't stack, it's not affordable, it doesn't work. Well, what they're doing is they're working on the last 15 yep, yep. years worth of data, not looking at the big picture of the last 300 years, and now we are operating in a normal environment. So your deals have to work in this normal environment. And uh, normalisation is what's happening. Let's have a look at that heat map once again. So as Andrew's just mentioned, interest rates have normalised back up to their historic norms. Um, and what we're seeing, of course, is month on month, thousands and thousands of mortgages are coming to the end of their fixed rates. And this, this affordability thing is becoming more and more of an issue. So when the Bank of England puts up rates, there's a certain time lag until the effects start to hit. And we haven't seen the effects of even the, the interest rate rises at the beginning of the year actually fully take effect yet. So the thing to think about is the direction of travel. If you look at this map here, red 2022, uh, in June 2023 it was this. What do you think it's going to be in June 2024? Is it going to go back to red or are we going to see more blues? What's the direction of travel? Well, I would purport that the direction of travel is this map will go virtually all blue and it will remain blue for two to three years at least while people's expectations normalize and prices normalize. Now who am I to make that assumption? Well let's take a look at Rightmove. Last month they published data mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where the average house coming to the market was 363,000. They then noted that the average sale price was 292,000. Very similar to the Office of National Statistics data of 285,000. So I would say that's within a, a spitting distance. And they're claiming there's a 22% drop between asking price and sale price. We can then look at Zoopla and they're talking prices down by 5%. I think the Zoopla might be slightly out. When we look at Standard and Poor's, which is a credit rating agency, now why is a credit rating agency important? Well, the banks borrow money, and if the banks are lending money frivolously or over lending on properties, 
then what you'll find is their credit rating drops, which means it costs them more to borrow the money, which means it costs them more to lend the money to you. And Standard & Poor's are saying they expect the market to drop 12%. My estimate is much less than a lot of other YouTubers out there who've been going, property price crash, 30% falls. I think that's absolute tosh. The data indicates it'll probably fall around 10% from where we are now. But YouTubers, what the hell do they know? Uh, what do you know? Leave your comments on your predictions on the property market in the comments below. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we upload new videos. Um, for, what, well, for what it's worth, I think we are going to see a fall, there's no doubt about it. We're going to see a fall of anywhere between 10 and 15%, I would say, uh, in the course of the next year or so. And that's particularly because of this interest rate time bomb. And of course, there's a psychological aspect to property, which um, sometimes we forget. In the boom market, everyone's talking about it, and there's FOMO, there's fear of missing out. You go to dinner parties and everyone's talking about getting into property, blah, blah, blah. So people uh, feel they're gonna miss out, so they have to get on the property ladder, and that causes them to buy. Um, it, we've seen this with Bitcoin. You know, Sometimes Bitcoins uh, double and treble and all the rest of it. Everyone's talking about it, and then every man and their dog are getting involved in Bitcoin. Uh, the same thing, similar sort of thing happens in property. There is a um, downward market sentiment on property, and that will feed into the psychology, particularly of owner-occupiers. The owner-occupiers are not like property investors. Owner-occupiers are making one property purchase decision, which is usually the largest uh, de purchase decision that they make in their lifetimes. And of course, um, psychology and what they think about the market and what they hear in mainstream media plays a big role in um, what they do and fear and then then it's about fear of getting into the market mm. which stops people from acting let's just stay in rented accommodation for another year see what happens blah 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 but they miss out on some of the opportunities because here's what happens when the market booms it overshoots upwards and prices get frothy and silly when it goes down they are property types that overshoot downwards and that's where the opportunities are for folks like us. It absolutely is. And in terms of this, this is the residential market graph that is sharing how the prices are predicted to fall. The, well, sorry, how they have fallen. How they're predicted to fall, it is definitely going to go blue. When we start to look at data published by the Bank of England again, which is the average family has £20,000 of consumer debt. So that's credit cards, loans for cars, goods and chattels in your house. What they're actually saying is, it means as rates are rising, they can now afford less to purchase in their property. So again, affordability will also pull prices down. And what's quite interesting, and this is a really good one for HMO uh, operators, is three and four bedroom homes, especially in areas where the average house price is £300,000 or more, 80% of those are falling in price faster than a knife. So there's a great opportunity if you're in those areas to snuffle up properties because they're not selling, there's no buyers for them at the moment, and you'll be the only guy or girl in town buying them. And uh, stay tuned to this channel, like, subscribe, comment and all of that, and we'll keep you informed as how to best apply those strategies in, these in this changing uh, market environment. Now, if you are interested in seeing more of Andrew and I, we host the UK's largest property investors networking meeting, the Baker Street Property Meet. We meet up on the last Wednesday of each month. You can find out details of our next meeting. It's attended by over 300 property investors, the Baker Street Property Meet. Now, as a special freebie, we are making available to you for a limited period only um, two of our most popular talks at at the Baker Street Property Meet. There's one from Andrew where he sets out the, how the market will play out over the next three years. And there's one from me where I give you my seven-step guide to profit 
from this new market environment. Those are two massive videos. Now, previously, these are only available to our Baker Street VIP members. But for a limited period, we're making them available to you guys. You can access them on this web page, web page link, the description's in below. Grab a copy, watch them, take some notes and all of that, and act on the information you see in there. It's absolutely free for a limited period only, so sign up for that uh, right now. But while you're still here, Ranjan, we've talked about it being a buyer's market in the residential space. It's massively a buyer's market in the commercial well, space. Well, if this was commercial, uh, that graph would be pretty much blue all, all, all right now. And for, for other reasons that we'll talk about in other videos, commercial properties are going to fall far more so than their residential counterparts. Absolutely. So stay tuned because the next video we will be recording is about the state of the commercial marketplace. If you want to know where the biggest opportunities are, which have the greatest opportunity to make massive uplift, then you need to stay tuned. Smash that subscribe button right now and hit the bell icon and it will alert you when that video comes out. That's it for this episode of Property Breaking News. Catch you guys in the next video. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.